There you go. <laughs> now, are you going to be a good boy for Granny and Grandad? <laughs> He's always a good boy, aren't you, Henry? We'll keep an eye on him, don't worry. Unlike your mum, who was a terribly grouchy baby. <laughs> was I? <laughs> well, Henry is just perfect. You're very lucky. But I'm really glad there's only one of him. How Elizabeth coped with twins. And she said Freddie was quite poorly when he was born. Yes, he was. I'm so glad we went over on Friday. I really wasn't sure before I went. It seemed a bit, you know, insensitive. Mm hmm? Well, here I am with my beautiful baby, never been happier in my life. And there's poor Elizabeth. Yeah. But she was pleased to see us, and when she held Henry, it was like for a brief moment she could feel that not everything is utterly dreadful. There is still hope in the world? Yeah. Mm. Anyway, I'd better go and get dressed, and then it'll nearly be time for your next feed, won't it, Henry? <laughs> I just don't know where the time goes. Go on, off you go. Shan't be long. <sighs> I still can't quite get used to it. Huh? Seeing her still in her pyjamas at this hour, with her hair all over the place. Yeah, and not giving a damn. What a transformation. Yeah, long may it continue. Let's hope so. Yeah. Oh, um, I have to say, Pat, I, I'm not entirely happy about this trip to Salzburg. Well, it's only three days. Well, yes, I know. Only it's your birthday. Yeah, I just don't feel easy about leaving Helen here on her own. Maybe she could, well, I don't know, go and stay with Jennifer or something. <laughs> She's never going to agree to that. Well, probably not. Oh, she'll be fine. It'll be good practice for when she goes back to the flat. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Oh, Cathy. Oh, uh, hello. Hi, uh, how are you? Fine, uh, how are you? Uh, how, how's Elizabeth? Oh, you know, uh, just putting one foot in front of the other. Oh, it's all you can do, really, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose. Just try to keep going. Afternoon. Yeah. Oh, hello. Oh, hi, Clary. Happy birthday. Thank you. Oh, no. And thanks for the card. Oh, it's not today, is it? 30th of January. But I, I thought when it was... it's always been. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't expect you to remember. So, but... what are you doing? Anything nice? No, nothing special. Uh, cooking Sunday lunch for Jamie. Well, uh, how is Jamie? He's all right. Uh, yeah? Why don't you come down to the ball this evening? I'm working, but I'm sure we'll have time for a natter. Oh, I was thinking I might drop in later. Oh, uh, to the pub? Uh, yeah. And Joe and Eddie will be there? I, I think I'll settle for a quiet evening in front of the telly. Oh. But thanks anyway. See you. Yeah. Bye then, yes, Catherine. Uh, see you. Oh, dear. What? I should have kept my mouth shut. Hey. Oh, well, she'd have probably gone to the bull if I hadn't said that I'd be there. Oh, no. If she wanted to come. Yeah, well, she can't keep on avoiding me forever. Anyway... Oh, I'm... is your mum all right? Uh, yeah, she's fine. And she went in church this morning? No, she's over at Low Loxley. Oh, yeah, of course mm. she would be. Yeah, and the weekends are particularly difficult for the kids. Oh, I still can't believe it. Yeah, I know. Those poor little mites. Yeah. Although, in a funny way, they're coping better than Elizabeth. Are they? Well, at least they talk about their dad and sometimes cry. Whereas Elizabeth, I think she's afraid that if she lets herself, you know, give in to her grief, then she'll just end up drowning in it. That's just what I need. Well, I did happen to notice your old gloves were a bit the worse for wear. Oh, I know. Look, they're a perfect fit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So, what are you doing to celebrate? Oh, nothing much. You going out? No. I'll have a glass or two of wine tonight and put my feet up in front of the telly. Not all on your own? Well, unless you count Jamie. That's a bit sad. Why don't we meet up for a drink? Oh, no, really. I'm sure you've got better things to do. No, I haven't. Come on, let's go to the ball. N no, seriously. Oh, we can I... go to Borchester, if you like. I'd just as soon stay home by the fire. That's not much of a birthday. I'm too old for birthdays anyway. Rubbish. Though Jamie did remember and bought me a card and a box of chocks. Good. Which I wasn't expecting at all, so that was nice. And we had a very pleasant lunch together, really civilised. So that'll do me. Tony and I are going to Salzburg for his 60th. Oh, yes, you said. Did I? Yeah, on Thursday. Oh, of course. A present from Helen. That's right. 
Not sure Tony's terribly keen, to be honest. Well, it will be a bit cold, won't it? <laughs> Absolutely freezing. <laughs> Give me sunshine any time. Well, no, no, it's not that. It's just he's not happy about leaving Helen on her own. Oh? She seemed to be coping remarkably well last week. Oh, she is. Wonderfully well. Um, the little I saw of her. She's tired, of course, with the nighttime feeds and everything. Oh, I remember. Total exhaustion. I've never seen her so happy and relaxed. Mind you, Helen's a lot younger than I was. And Henry is such a happy baby. Hardly cries at all. Oh, lucky Helen. Tony is completely besotted. Mm. Far more than he was with any of our three. <laughs> well, you must come round and meet Henry properly. Well, it... oh, he was already tucked up in bed when you came on Thursday, wasn't he? <laughs> yes. Why don't you trot round one afternoon? I don't want to impose. Don't be silly. You're obviously very busy. Well, you're not imposing. I'm always glad to see you. You know that. It's kind of you to say, but... I missed you last week. Uh, I think it's best if we just stick to one day a week. For, for supper, yeah, but call in on your way home from work like you used to. Have a cup of tea. T Tony's usually doing the milking round that time, so... Yes, uh, I know he is. It's just... <sighs> What? I've got a really busy week at work, actually. So, some other time. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, I could really do with a bit of fresh air. Do you think it's too late to go out for a walk? Well, it will be dark for at least an hour. But you'll need to wrap up. Yeah, it's freezing, isn't it? I'll keep an eye on Henry for you. Oh, no. As long as you're back before milking time. I was going to take Henry with me. Well, you can't take him out in this weather. I'll put him in the little snowsuit that Mum got him, and if I carry him in the sling... You can't do that. I'm going to snug up against my chest. You'll put a strain on your wound. Dad, it's virtually all healed up now. I'm practically good as new. Don't go taking silly chances. I'm not. You're not even allowed to drive for another couple of weeks. Oh, which is such a bore. I'm sure I'm perfectly capable of driving now. There's no point in rushing these things. In fact, I've been thinking, and I've decided I'm going to move back into the flat. Uh, when? Later on this week. This week? Hmm, Thursday or Friday. Oh, but, uh, darling, you've only just brought Henry home. It's nearly a week already. Which is no time at all, when you're still settling Henry into a routine. He didn't need settling into a routine. He just fell into it, naturally. You don't want to risk disrupting things. And you said yourself you're tired. No, I didn't. Oh, you were yawning your head off a minute ago. I just need some fresh air. And surely you're better off here, where you've got Mum and me to help you out. I know you want to hold on to Henry, Dad. No, I I'm thinking of you. And believe me, nothing gives me more pleasure than to see how you dote on him. But I can't rely on you and Mum forever. Well, not forever, OK, but, well, give it a few weeks. I chose to do this on my own, Dad, so I really should start getting used to it. Uh, at least wait until you can drive. Oh, my goodness, it's bitter out there. Is it? Yeah. Oh, perhaps I'll forget about that walk. Walk? Hmm, just fancied a breath of fresh air, but maybe I'll leave it till the morning. Uh, she's threatening to move back to the flat. Not yet, surely. Later in the week. What? You tell her, Pat. She won't listen to me. Tell her what? That it's madness. It's far too soon. And I know you want to prove you can manage on your own, lover, and I'm sure you will. When you're a bit stronger and Henry's a bit bigger. Oh, darling, did Grandad wake you up? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, he was being a bit noisy, wasn't he? Come on, then. Oh, you get... Oh, that's it. Oh, you've got a white nappy too, haven't you? Oh. Right, let's go and sort that out, shall we? Do you want a cup of tea? That'd be lovely. Not serious, is she? Yeah, I'm afraid so. You really want to go back to the flat? That's what she said. Oh dear. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Oh, well, there's no point in arguing with her, Tony. Well, we can't just let her go. So, what do you suggest? Lock her in her room? No, no, of course Tell not. Then we'll do what she wants to do. Fact of life. And if it's a mistake, she'll find out soon enough. Clary, I ain't a member of the WI. We won't hold it against you. <laughs> it's just there's a few spare seats on the coach, so if you fancy a day out. In a bakery? It's what they call an artisan baker's. Posh handmade bread? Yeah, that sort of thing. Oh, 
to be honest, Clary. I saw enough of bakeries for one lifetime when I were married to Wayne. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah I forgot. <laughs> and then he wrote, I couldn't really take the old day off. Yeah, I feel a bit bad letting Pat down. If there's as few people in during the week as there are tonight, it's hardly going to be worth opening. Mm. What about Fallon? What about her? Would she like to come on the outing? I don't think somehow the WI is quite Fallon's thing. Oh, it ain't all jam in Jerusalem, you know. There's lots of younger women joining these days. Nick's coming on the out on Tuesday. Is she? Yeah. Evening. Oh, hello. Oh, hi. God, where is everybody? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, it's such a miserable night. You can't really blame people for staying home. Oh. Now, Kenton, what can I get you? Um, just a half, I think. Shires? Yeah, please. That's funny, isn't it? We did really well last week. The farmhouse breakfast effects. <laughs> it weren't just the breakfast. Trade weren't bad lunch times or evenings come to that. Ah. But that's the point about a good promotion. You know, People come for the special event, then remember what a good time they had and they come back. Oh, excuse me, we have a customer. Oh, talking of promotions... Uh, what? Valentine's Day. Thanks. What about it? What are you doing? Oh, I don't know yet. I not thought. Well, you better get thinking. It's only two weeks away. Um, hmm. There you go. That's uh... Now, we've already got the posters up in Jack's. Wow, good for you. What's the matter? No, oh, it's nothing. No, come on, you can tell me. It's just the relentlessness of it all, I suppose. Hmm. Valentine's Day, hearts and flowers, pink champagne. No sooner is that over with, but it's pancake day. Get that one out of the way, and it's time for the launch for the spring menus. Before you know it, it's Easter and bunnies and bonnets and egg hunts and the rest. And so it goes on and on and on. Yeah, well, if you put it like that... Oh, oh I'm sorry, Kent. It ain't no notice of me. But when times are hard... I know, well, I know. Yeah. It's the specials that make the difference. Worked last week, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, it did. It's just sometimes I feel... I'm... What? Well, I feel that's all my life is. Promotional events. It's all just one thing after another. Oh, darling, um, is there any sign of Kate this morning? Oh, she left half an hour ago. Left? Yeah, went into college. Good heavens. Why do you say that? Oh, she's being remarkably conscientious. I think she's still got a bit of catching up to do. And she packed Phoebe off home pretty sharpish last night. She had something to finish off. Well, it's not like her at all. Some essay or assignment that had to be done by this morning. <laughs> well, long may it continue this exemplary diligence. Anyway, I must be off. Oh, you back for lunch? Uh, no, no. I mean, the meeting should be over by half twelve, but I'm having lunch with Annabelle and Martin. Oh, see. And Andrew, if he can make it, he won't sure. Well, so we've got a meeting schedule for next week. Oh. Isn't it next week you hear about the planning decision? Yeah, so uh, we need to talk about what we're going to do if the plans are rejected. Did Kenton sort out that problem with the pianist? Pianist? For the wedding, only the chap dropped out. Wasn't Kenton going to talk to the people in that orchestra? What orchestra? It was here on Friday. Anyway, Lewis knows about it. Oh, I'd better give him a call. You can rely on Lewis, you know that. He's Mr. Organisation. He makes lists and ticks things off. It's not answering. Uh, Lewis, it's Elizabeth. Can you give me a call, please? Right. That is done. Now, is there anything particular you want me to do this week? Um, or should I just get on with preparing for this estate meeting with Graham Ryder? Yeah, there was something. Oh, yes, yes, the wine. The wine? Yeah, I had a call from the agent about this year's distribution. Distribution? What does that mean? After it's been bottled and it's sent out to the various outlets. Oh, I see. You know, retailers and restaurants. OK. Sorry, my knowledge of the wine business only extends as far as picking the grapes. It usually happens in about May. And drinking the stuff, obviously. David, I don't want to let this slip. No, of course not. It was one of Nigel's great dreams to make Lower Loxley wine, a, a, you know... A, I'll dig out the files. A classic. I'll see what needs doing when. Well, the pruning, for a start. What? That should be happening. What, now? Within the next month or so, yes. It's something Nigel always used to... 
Well, he didn't do it all himself, obviously, but he was always out there, you know... Supervising. Yes, I suppose, or or helping out. I don't know who exactly was in charge. I'll I'll find out, don't worry. Yeah, and talk to the agent... uh, uh... About distribution. Yep, got it. In fact, he'll probably know about the pruning, won't he? Possibly. He'll be able to point me in the right direction anyway. Yeah. OK, now, about this meeting... With the trustees. The trustees? No, I meant the estate... Good morning. Hi. Oh, Kenton, a pianist. What? For the wedding. Ah, a splendid young woman called Penny, something or other. She's married to the leader of that orchestra who were playing last week. It's very nice. Yeah, but can she play? Is she trained at the Royal College? But if she's classically trained... Um, she said at the last wedding she did, the bride wanted to walk down the aisle to Minnie the Moocher. It's not very suitable for a bride. How can you play Minnie the Moocher on the piano? Ask the lovely Penny. She is nothing if not versatile. OK, and what about the florist? Have you checked? Yeah, 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 don't worry. Lewis has made a list. Told you. Oh, that reminds me. I need to have a word with Eileen Tickham. I won't be a minute. OK. Oh, phew. I know. I wish she'd slowed down a bit. Oh, well, don't we all? It's difficult to get her to concentrate on one thing at a time. Yeah, I know. And I'm not entirely clear what I'm meant to be doing. You know, what's a matter of urgency and what can wait? It's weird, isn't it, how grief takes people in different ways? Is it? Oh, Elizabeth's this bundle of manic energy, whereas you know, I dropped into the bull last night and Jolene has difficulty summoning up the will to do anything at all. Hello, home farm? Jennifer! Oh! Hello, Matt. Brian's out, I'm afraid. What, over Brookfield again, is he? Not today, no. I heard he'd been getting his hands dirty. So, where is he today, then? He's at a meeting. What? BL? Yes. And he said he wouldn't be home until after lunch. Oh, OK. Can I give him a message? No, no, it's all right. I'll catch him later. Oh, how's Lillian, by the way? Haven't seen her for ages. Yeah, she's all right. Only Adam said she was a bit down in the dumps. Really? When was this? Oh, can't remember. A week or so back. Well, first I've heard of it. Ah, I meant to give her a ring, but what with Kate coming back and everything else, it rather slipped my mind. Yeah, well, nothing to worry about. Lillian's absolutely fine. And if there's the least possibility of rain, even just the slightest shower... Umbrellas, I know. And plenty of people standing by to hold them. It's so important, Mm -hmm. particularly at a wedding when people are all dressed up. Yeah, I'm fine. Although the forecast looks okay, pretty cold still, but reasonably clear. And we usually have the rooms a degree or two warmer than usual. I know. Because brides and bridesmaids don't usually think about, you know... Wearing thermals. Keeping warm. Yeah, well, I've had a word with Eileen... Have you? Yeah, and arranged for all the fires to be lit. Well, she didn't mention it. Yeah, by eight in the morning. Well, when did you talk to Eileen? First thing. Oh. Yeah, so all the rooms should be nice and warm by the time the wedding guests arrive. OK. And I've spoken to the florist, who will also be here at eight, and the cake will be delivered at nine. Is it a tiered cake? Yes, yeah, three tiers. Well, you have to be sure. No, 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 don't worry. I know all about catastrophic cake collapse, and we have plenty of pillars to support it. OK. Yeah, trust me, I have thought of everything. Or rather, Lewis has. The only thing I mustn't do is forget to set my alarm. Or I'll wake you. No, 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 it's okay. Lewis has promised to ring me at uh, 6.30, just in case. You know, Ken Tindon, emceeing a wedding. What? Well, it was one of the things Nigel was so good at. I know. He was... Well, you know what he was like... Any excuse for a party and always determined everyone should enjoy it as much as he did. And I can't possibly fill his shoes, I know that. But uh, I reckon I can do a pretty good job. And, well, I'm actually starting to look forward to it. I'm not. Elizabeth, why don't you give yourself the day off? No. Go and spend the day with Mum. I can't. I need to be here. Okay. And it's not that I don't trust you or Lewis. I'm sure you'll do a great job. But I just feel I should be here. You can't be sure. Of course not. 
planning applications often get turned down on the flimsiest of reasons. I know, I know. I, I mean, all it takes is a Linda Snell to discover the site is the habitat of endangered toads. Yeah, yes. Mm. And do you remember when the Thwaites' neighbour wanted to build an extension? No. And Richard objected on the grounds that it would adversely affect the quality of darkness in their garden. What? You know, with the extra lights. Oh, I've never heard that one before. And he got away with it. The application was rejected. Ah. Well, that's not going to happen with the new market. Well, probably not, but... Everybody agrees it's a much-needed facility and a pretty yeah. ideal location. Yeah, well... Just don't count your chickens. I mean, if it does get turned down, it'll probably be on some minor point we can appeal against. Oh. Anyway, we, uh, well, let's say the BL board, are looking on the bright side. Right. To the extent that they've agreed I should go over to SEMA at the end of February. SEMA? The Paris International Agribusiness Show. Oh, yes, we went there before once, didn't we? Well... A few years ago. Uh, well, I did. I, I think you went shopping or something. Oh, yes, yes, I remember. Anyway, it's the place to look at the latest developments in livestock handling equipment. And obviously, we want to get the best for the new market. When is it? Uh, in about three weeks' time. I might give Debbie a call, actually, see if she can make it. Oh, yes, that would be lovely. Only with all the experience she's had in Hungary, she's something of an expert in large-scale livestock handling. Three weeks' time. Oh, I wonder if I could persuade Kate to look after Rory for a couple of days. What? And then I could come with you again. I I'm not sure that's a good idea. It'd be strictly a business trip, straight over, straight back. Oh, what on earth's he doing here? Oh, I'm sorry. He rang and I forgot to tell you. Oh. Hello, Matt. Come on in. Good afternoon. Hello. Shall I, um, shall I take your coat? Actually, Jennifer, I'm not stopping. Oh, I just made some tea. Enough for me, thanks. Um, so, how was the meeting? What? Jennifer said you had a BL meeting. Oh, Matt phoned this morning just after you'd left. Oh. It was fine. It was fine. It was just run-of-the-mill stuff. And what about the planning application? Well, we didn't really discuss it. I mean, nothing we can do at this stage, but we're all cautiously optimistic. Uh, no need for caution. It's a done deal. How do you know? I have my sources. Right. So it'll be all systems go next if week. If your sources are reliable. Anyway, look, I didn't come around to talk about that. I just wondered, any chance of a day shooting? Shooting? How about Friday? You're too late, I'm afraid. Season ends tomorrow. Yeah, strictly speaking, I know. The 1st of February. But I'm not talking anything official, just an informal occasion for a few friends. I'm sorry, Matt. And a client who could put a lot of shooting business your way. Really? Oh, yeah. Look, it's more than my life's worth, I'm afraid. But there's still plenty of birds around. Will would quit if I even suggested it. Shame to see him go to waste. That's the law, Matt. And shooting's not exactly something you can do on the quiet, is it? Uh, yeah, very good. Look at it this way. We're about to embark on a very high-profile development, which nothing must jeopardise. So we need to keep our noses exceptionally clean. Oh, well. I have to be golf, I suppose. You fancy joining us? On Friday? Uh, I'm not sure I can. I've been helping out over at Brookfield, you see. Well, I should think you've earned yourself a day off by now, haven't you? And then I had a word with Reg about the rare breeds. Is there a problem? No, no. Well, you're a bit overstocked, but that's easily dealt with. Overstocked? Yeah. Reg said he mentioned it to Nigel some months ago, but... Anyway, as I say, it's no big deal. I can easily sell some of them on. OK. And I talked to Nick Parslow about the wine. Who's Nick Parslow? The agent. He gave me his number. Oh, him. Right. Uh, yes. And he has put me in touch with somebody just over in Brampton Green who will come in and prune the vines. OK. Don't really know what the going rate is for vine pruning, but it sounds quite reasonable to me. What's up with the printer? It's run out of paper. Oh, right. Oh, and what about that meeting with Graham Ryder? Ah, well, I've dug out some minutes from the last quarterly meeting in November and it all looks perfectly straightforward, so, yep, yeah, no problem. I can deal with that. Thank you. But uh, what about this trustees meeting? Can I do anything for that? Oh, no, don't worry. Are you sure? I can deal with it. OK. Well, I reckon we're all set for tomorrow. Are you? Yeah, I've just had a final meeting with Lewis and gone through his lists, ticking everything off. I am so glad it's you doing that and not me. Uh, right, I'm uh, just going to pop over to Jack's now, if that's OK. Oh, yes, of course. I mean, I'm sure they can manage perfectly well without me, but... Uh, yeah. Oh, and I gave Mum a call. She said she'd come over tomorrow. Oh, OK. Yeah, just to keep you company. Keep me company?
keep me out of the way, you mean? No, no, not if you don't want to be out of the way. But Lewis and I can handle the wedding, I promise you. I feel like I'm playing truant. Oh, was Pat not happy about giving you the day off? No, no, she was fine about it. But I still feel a bit guilty. Morning. Oh, hi. Morning, Jill. Are you coming on the outing? I'm afraid not. Oh, that's a shame. Yes, I always enjoy WI trips. And the Wheatier Bakery does have a wonderful reputation. Sure, you can afford three quid for a large loaf. <laughs> oh, is that what they charge? Even more for the ones with nuts and seeds. Really? But they're going to show you how it's done. And then we'll be able to make it ourselves for a quarter of the price. <laughs> exactly. I'd love to come. But I'm afraid I'm needed elsewhere. How is Elizabeth? And how are the twins? Lee and Freddie are coping, you know, but... Elizabeth... Well, we're all trying to persuade her to take things a bit easier. She does have plenty of help, though, doesn't she? Oh, yes, we're all pitching in. David's over there practically every day. Well, give her our best. Yeah, yeah, do let her know we're all thinking of her. Thanks. Anyway, enjoy the outing. We will. Oh, I hate the smell of lilies. It is a little overpowering, isn't it? Hell, they don't smell like real flowers. More like air freshener. Oh, don't let the florist hear you saying that. Well, it's all right. She's gone. And they have lethal pollen, too. I mean, what's the betting someone ends up with stains on their wedding gear? Oh, I'd better add that to my list. What? Alongside the first aid and the sewing kit. Something for removing pollen stains from clothing. Oh. I'm sure Mrs Titcomb will know what to do. Oh, bound to. She really should write a book. The Eileen Titcomb Book of Household Management and Stain Removal. <laughs> but they are quite flamboyant, aren't they, these floral displays? What, you mean vulgar? Well, I was expecting something a little more... Um, Tasteful? Uh, subtle. And uh, look at the size of that pedestal thing by the door. It's absolutely massive. Well, I rather fear that's going to impede the pianist's view of the corridor. Well, so she won't know when the bride is making her approach. Mm, I think one of us should station himself beside that pedestal arrangement so that we can semaphore. Uh, good thinking, Lewis. Shall I do that? Yeah, OK, uh, but uh, be aware of pollen stains on your shirt front, eh? <laughs> I shall. Morning! Oh, hi, Mum. Morning, Jill. Goodness, it's like the hothouse at the Botanical Garden. Yes, we were just saying. Yeah, horrible, isn't it? Oh, no. A little extravagant, perhaps, but fresh flowers are never horrible. Oh, talking of extravagant, there are caviar and quail's eggs on the menu. Really? Yeah, and enough champagne to float a battleship. Oh, dear. I'm beginning to wonder if the Barrington Hughes clan are actually Russian oligarchs. <laughs> I do hope it's not going to be too riotous. So do I. I'll try and keep Elizabeth well away, but I can't promise. She might find the gaiety of the occasion a little hard to take. Mm. If only she'd agreed to come over to mine. He made it look so effortless, didn't he? It's actually quite sort of tough. Use the heel of your hand, like this. OK. Yeah, and just kind of push it away from... Right, like that. Oh, oh yeah, that, that's better. Oh, it's really stretchy, isn't it? Is, is that the yeast? No, no, the yeast makes it rise. I think the stretchiness is the, uh, uh, what do you call it, gluten in the flour. All oh, right, and... OK, so now put the edges to the middle. That's right, yeah. And then turn it, like, sideways, look. Acid, oh. and now do the same thing again. Oh, you need to put your back into it, don't you? <laughs> It's very therapeutic, kneading bread. There used to be times, I remember, when Eddie was driving me completely up the wall. Oh, dear. And I'd mix up some dough and take out all my frustrations on it. I ain't done that for ages. Eddie not been driving up the wall, then? <laughs> Happy the day. <laughs> no. Joe broke a tooth on a particularly crusty loaf, and now he won't eat nothing but shop ball. Oh, that's a shame. I'd rather got out the habit. It's like a piece of elastic. Every time I pull it, it just sort of bounces back. Oh, that means it's ready. But we've been needing for a few minutes. Well, that's all it takes. So we just put it in the bowl and leave it to rise? Yeah, that's right. Uh, and then you punch it with your fist. What? They call it knocking back. Oh, I can see why it's a good way to work out your frustration. Then. then you let it rise again and it's ready to go in the oven. And that's it? Yeah, that's it. Huh? And then fresh bread straight out the oven. Oh, and mm. you get that wonderful smell, don't it's gorgeous, you? gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, I'm definitely going to try this at home. All right, 
Yes, fine. Well, you managed to come up with something. Yes, don't worry. It was a very festive-looking baked apple. Oh, right. You'd think the chap would have mentioned that he was a vegan. He says he did. But the message obviously didn't get as far as the caterers. Well, if that's the only problem we have to deal with today, I think we'll have got off very lightly. Mm, it's gone pretty well so far, hasn't it? Oh, the ceremony was charming. Oh, wasn't bad, was it? And the food looked wonderful. Mm. Oh, that chocolate mousse. If I was a vegan, I would have definitely fallen off the wagon at that point. Although I'm not sure the bride's mother is entirely entering into the spirit. Oh, we're probably wondering how they're going to pay for it all. Oh, no, I don't think so. The Barrington Hughes family owns a substantial part of Borsetshire. Ah. Well, perhaps she thinks her daughter could have done better. Very possibly. Oh, the groom's family was in there in a lovely time. Particularly that lot on the end table. Yes. Yeah, they've been knocking about the old shampoo like it was going out of fashion. Hey, uh, do you think that's the uh, black sheep table? The what? You know, where they've parked all the embarrassing relations they couldn't avoid inviting. Yeah. I, oh, I say. Look at the best man. He's gone white as a sheet. Oh, don't tell me he's drunk. No, I, I think it's the imminence of his speech. The nerves have just kicked in. <laughs> oh, poor chap. Well, uh, now that practically everyone's finished eating, perhaps we should... Um, what, uh, crack on with the speeches? Yeah, put the poor man out of his misery. OK, I'll put my Master of Ceremonies hat back on and uh, call the house to order then. OK, oh, hang on, hang on. What? We seem to have a mass exodus. Oh, no. It, it's just the black sheep table that... Ah! They're smokers, going out for a cigarette. Well, should I wait for them to come back, do you think? Well, there's only half a dozen of them. And actually, if anyone was going to heckle the speeches, it would be them. Heckle? Well, it does happen, when certain parties have overindulged. Oh, well, right, well, let's get on with it then. Um, you make sure glasses are charged for the toast, and I'll whisper in the groom's ear. Are you warm enough? It's pretty chilly still, isn't it? Do you want to go back inside? No. No, I'm OK. I thought when the sun came out it would warm things up a bit. It's good to get out. Seems we've been stuck in that office for days. It's put the roses back in your cheeks. Ellen rang this morning. Did she? Just to see how we all were. That was nice of her. Yes. And I had a call from the chair of the trustees just to confirm our meeting on Monday. I'm sure that's nothing to worry about. They just want to support you during this period. As long as they don't want to interfere. Perhaps they'll offer some practical help. If that means working with a manager, I don't want it. Well, at least listen to what they've got to say. Their objectives are the same as yours. They want the business to thrive. I know perfectly well how to run this business. Of course you do. It was you who got the conference business off the ground in the first place. That's right. And lots of the other enterprises, too. Yeah, but I didn't run it single-handed, did I? And I bet that's what they're going to say. They're going to want me to bring in outside help. Would that be such a bad thing? What, to hand the running of Lower Loxley over to a total stranger? I wasn't suggesting I mean, you think that. that's what Nigel would have wanted? Because I don't. He'd hate it. He'd hate the whole idea. Oh, look, they're doing photographs on the terrace. What? The wedding party. Look at those poor bridesmaids in their skimpy little frocks. They look absolutely frozen, poor dears. Why don't they do the photos inside? Well, that'll be the Borsetshire live photographer. Oh. He always likes to show the hall to its best advantage, and with the sun low in the sky like this. It's... It does look rather lovely, doesn't it? Mm. Oh, here comes Lewis. Good heavens. What has that woman got on her head? Some kind of fascinator. It looks like she's got a cactus growing out of her ear. Lovely afternoon, isn't it? Still pretty cold. How did it go, the wedding? Absolutely wonderful. Kenton has been quite brilliant. Oh, good. <laughs> well, one young lady fell off her six-inch heels after a few too many glasses of champagne. Did she hurt herself? Only her pride. <laughs> and she ruined her tights. But the splendid Mrs Titcombe managed to rustle up a fresh pair. Oh, she is such a treasure. And we've got the usual hijinks from some of the young men going away car has been adorned with tin cans and crazy foam mm. and for all I know a kipper under the bonnet. Mm. It's the sort of thing Nigel and Tim Beecham used to do. Yes. Do you remember? What? Nothing. Um, shall we go back inside? It's all down to Clary. We went on the WI outing today. Oh. 
to the Wheat Deer Bakery? Yeah, it was great. Loads of fun. And actually, I'm, I'm really inspired. You're going to be baking your own bread now, Nick? Mm, we all are. The moment we got off the coach, half the WI members were straight into the shop buying up all the supplies of flour. <laughs> Here's your lager. Thanks. And to top it off, Clary said she'd babysit so I could bring Will out for a little drink. Oh, good old Clary. Good evening. Hiya. Hey, we weren't expecting to see you tonight, Canton. Uh, well, I feel the need for a substantial drink. Oh, weren't it today you was doing that wedding? Oh, yes. <laughs> the bride and groom are safely dispatched and the guests all packed off home. Oh, did it go all right? It was a triumph. <laughs> That's uh, 4.20 then, please, Nick. There you go. I tell you what, if Jax ever goes under, I have a bright future as Master of Ceremonies. Weddings, a speciality, but hey, I could branch out into christenings and bar mitzvahs. <laughs> uh, there's 80 pence change, Nick. <laughs> Thanks. So, what exactly does a Master of Ceremonies do? Oh, is it calls for silence, leads the applause? I reckon I could do that. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a bit more to it than that. Oh. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Nick, you enjoy your evening. Thanks, Jilly. Yeah, see ya. Oh, pint, can't Oh, it? yeah, that really would hit the spot. Oh. Actually, I, I had another reason for coming over tonight. Uh-huh. Yeah, but, uh, well, obviously I've had a wasted journey. What do you mean? When I came in on Sunday, there was no sign of any Valentine's Day preparations. Uh. Yeah, and I've bought all this stuff for Jack's for well, far too much, as it turns out. So I brought you some. Oh, Kent, that's really kind. Yeah, but you've beaten me to it. Well, Fallon has... Uh... She dug out all the old stuff from last year. Yeah, so I see. <laughs> she and I have been dreaming up special Cupid cocktails. Cupid cocktails, eh? Yeah, there's a list there in the bar. Ooh, Do you know, I think I'm going to nick that idea. You feel free. Yeah. Though, so, uh, mm, yeah, I might refine the recipes a bit. Yeah. I think uh, tequila true love sounds huh? particularly nauseating. Ooh, ooh, with strawberry liqueur. Ooh. Uh, any road, look, uh, thanks for the thought, and, um, yeah, I have this point on me. Oh, oh, no, you don't have to do that. Uh, it's just to say sorry for being such a misery on Sunday. Look, there's no need to apologise. <sighs> no, I know what an awful grind it can be sometimes, yeah? organising one event after another. Well, it's not just that, it's, um, mm. Valentine's Day, without Sid. Uh, see, uh, February 14th, that's the day he proposed to me. And how is little Henry? Oh, he's more gorgeous by the day. <laughs> Here, hang on. I've got some new photos on my phone. Oh. No, where are we? Um, there. <gasps> oh, look at those big blue eyes. Oh, isn't he a <laughs> poppet? <laughs> and the wee cities one, do you not recognise that? Oh, is that one of Oscar's? Yeah, they were way too big when he was first born, but he's put on so much weight. Oh, Oscar grew out of that first size in about three weeks. Well, I mean, Henry's just grown into it. In fact, I mean, he's doing so well, Helen's decided to move back to the flat on Thursday. Already? Yeah. Is that wise? Well, I mean, yeah, Tony thinks she's mad, and I don't think Pat's too crazy about the idea, but I mean, you know what Helen's like. Once she's made up her mind to do something. I remember when Oscar was tiny and Justin was away in America, Coriander needed so much support from me and Robert. Morning. Oh, oh you've caught me playing truant. Morning, Caroline. <laughs> I was just showing under the latest pictures of wee Henry Archer. There. Oh, isn't he a sweetie? No, well, I, I best get back to the kitchen. I, I wanted a word with you, actually. Uh, could you come to my office in about half an hour? Oh, dear. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> Nothing. What, has someone complained? No, 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 it's nothing to worry about. Now, go on, off you go. Oh, all right, um, I'll see you in a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, Caroline, can I just ask, how long is that corner of reception going to be cordoned off? Oh, it should be dry by this afternoon. It's just there was a particularly stubborn red wine stain on the carpet. Well, that's been there for weeks. Yes, I know. And it hardly showed at all. I just decided the time had come to get it seen to. Same with the window frames out the front. Oh, I wondered what the scaffolding was for. Oh, just a little running repair. Yeah, it's not really the time of year for exterior decoration, is it? No, I know, but um, every time I walked in the front door, I noticed the flaking paintwork. Robert always so says... So I simply it... had to get something done. Leave it till the spring. Yes, she's probably right. You'll save yourself money in the long run. Anyway, it's done now. So um, I must get on.
Thanks for doing that. It's okay. You're so much better at operating the grab than I am. <clears throat> Will you be okay to do the drawing down? Honey, I really ought to be getting over to Lower Loxley. Uh, Brian's coming over later, so I can get him to do it. But don't forget, you did say you'd take Pip out for driving practice this evening. <sighs> did I? You know you did. It's a test tomorrow. Oh, yeah, of course. So if you can get home before dark... Well, I'll try, but I can't promise. But you did promise. Pip's relying on you. Well, can't you take her out? I don't finish milking till gone six. It's just that I've And got... then I've got the dinner to do. I can't do everything. I know that. I've got a lot of paperwork to get through today for the meeting with Graham Ryder. Uh, don't tell me that some of it can't wait till tomorrow. Oh, I suppose It's I... a question of priorities, David. Yes, all right. <sighs> what time will she be home? About four, she said. OK, I'll do my best. Oh, come and sit down, Ian. Oh, I hope you're not going to insist that work on Friday, are you? What? Well, I'm taking some time off during the day. Are you? Yeah, I did tell you. Um, I was only Helen's moving back into her flat on Thursday, and I think she's going to need a wee bit of care and attention, just getting herself settled in. <laughs> right. No, this has nothing to do with Friday. Oh, good. Your work schedule is between you and the other chefs. No, no, this is about Wednesday the 16th. Wednesday the 16th? Why, what's happening then? We are hosting a tea for the Borsetshire branch of the Osteoporosis Society. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. In the Darrington Room. It's their 25th anniversary. Good for them. And to mark the occasion, they're going to be joined by their national president. Who's that? Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Cornwall. You're kidding me? Nope. We're getting a royal visit? Yes. Here at Grey Gables? Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's why you've been tarting the place up the last few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it does concentrate the mind, Ian. You start noticing all the shabby bits. Oh, so who knows? No one yet. Well, apart from Roy, because he's been in charge of, you yeah, know... Yeah, tarting um... up the shabby bits, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But now it's official. Because you've told me? And it'll be in the Echo tomorrow. So I don't have to keep it to myself? <laughs> no, you don't. Mm, that's a relief. I'm hopeless, we see, Chris. Mm, I just wanted to warn you so that you can make sure the teas, you know, particularly special. Uh, my teas are always special. <laughs> <sighs> I know, I know. That was a silly thing to say. Oh, although come to think of it, I mean, I was going to do me shortbread. Oh, that'd be ideal. If I had to choose one thing for a tea party, it'd be your shortbread. But uh, that might seem like I was being competitive. Competitive? Yeah, have you tried Dutchy shortbread? Oh. I mean, that's really very good. Oh, you do what you think's best. Whatever it is, I'm sure it'll be delicious. I've strawed down the bedding area and, and fed the ewes. Brian, you're a star. Right. Well, is there anything else you'd like me to do before I head off? I don't suppose you fancy cooking dinner for the kids. <laughs> no, I think I'll pass on that one. <laughs> don't blame you. Seriously, though, thank you so much. I honestly don't know how I'd have coped these past few weeks if it hadn't been for you. I'm glad to be of service. Oh, look, here's David back. Thank goodness for that. Oh. He's supposed to be taking Pip out for some driving practice. She's got a test tomorrow. Afternoon. Hi there. You made it, then? Yeah. Wasn't too bad today, after all. Reggie's on top of things, and I've organised for the vines to be pruned, so I'm finally starting to see the wood for the trees. Good. Well, look, uh, I must get on with the milking. Is Pet back? Yeah, she got back 20 minutes ago. Thanks again for your help, Brian. Oh, uh, any time. Come on, girl. Get yourself inside. So how's Elizabeth? Oh, I don't know. She's trying desperately to keep things going, you know, to carry on as if... Well, I just wish she... I mean, I don't know what's normal in these circumstances, and maybe it's the only way she can keep herself sane, but I wish she'd, you know, let go a bit, trust the rest of us to keep things ticking over until... I don't know. Sounds like you could do the day off. <laughs> I wish. Although, to be fair, things are starting to settle down. Last week was just a nightmare. Yet Ruth said something about a wedding. Yeah, huge, great society do. I didn't have a clue. But Kenton took it on in the end and made a pretty good job of it, by all accounts. Mm. And it freed me up to deal with estate matters, which I can just about cope with. Good, good. Now, uh, David, mm. on Friday, I've sort of been talked into playing golf. <laughs> all right, for some. Well, it's not for pleasure, I assure you. No? Uh, there's potentially a bit of future business with a shoot in it. Oh, right. 
so I won't be able to come over here. Oh, don't worry about it. Well, I'll try and drop in tomorrow, but it, it'll only be for a couple of hours, I'm afraid, because I've got a meeting in the afternoon. Well, actually, Brian, I think we can probably manage without you now. Really? Yeah. I mean, like I said, I've only got a few estate matters to sort out at Lower Loxley. I finally got Reg on track, and so I'm anticipating being able to spend a lot more time back here now. Oh, uh, OK. <laughs> Have to, in fact. We start lambing in less than a fortnight. Well, OK. Uh, but if you do need a hand with anything, I mean, just give me a call, all right? So how long have you known? Well, only since this morning. I mean, that's why Caroline wanted to see me. Uh, jam! You've forgotten the jam? Oh, come on now, pay attention. Sorry, Chef. It's very short notice. Yeah, well, I mean, I knew there was a charity tea happening then. Well, for the Osteoporosis Society. Didn't you know it was one of Her Royal Highness's charities? Nope. And that Caroline's uncle was a sufferer? No, I didn't know that either. Oh, Ian, you must remember. He had a bad fall only a couple of months ago. Oh, what, you're, you're talking about Lord Netherborn? Of course, Lord Netherborn. What, so there's a connection? Obviously. Oh, sorry, no, I'm, I'm a bit slow on the uptake here. Mm. Sorry, excuse me, I need to get to the oven. <sighs> well, I have to say it's a great relief to me to know that Caroline is not selling up. Selling up? <laughs> Whatever gave you that idea? Seemed the only logical explanation for Caroline smartening the place up prior to putting it on the market. You didn't think that, did you? Oh, Robert and I have been deeply concerned. Well, um, um, are you just going to ignore these scones? Sorry, Jim. Yeah. Because who's to say that a new owner wouldn't decide on a wholesale change of staff? You haven't been quietly fretting about your job. Oh, well, I did confront Caroline. She denied it, of course, but then she would, wouldn't she? It occurred to me for a moment that her reticence was a consequence not of a guilty secret, but of royal protocol. No, oh, well, that wouldn't be the first thing to cross your mind. Oh, it is such a relief. And so exciting. What a magnificent coup for Grey Gables. Mm -hmm. And when Her Royal Highness arrives, she will pass within two feet of my reception desk. Do you think we'll be introduced? What, well, you're on duty that day, are you? What? Only you were on early today. It's on a Tuesday, isn't it? No, 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 no. It's two weeks today. It's Wednesday, the 16th. Oh, no. Oh, no, that's not possible. I'm not working that day. OK, so who is? Uh, if I remember rightly, it's Katerina. Oh, she'll be over the moon. She adores anything to do with the royal family. No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I can't have that. I have to be at reception. I shall simply have to reorganise the schedule. You can't do that. Of course I can. It's my job. It's going to be another cold night. I um, I put the lasagna in the oven. I assume that was meant for supper. Oh, thanks. How long has it been in? It'll be ready in about 15 minutes. Great. How was Pip's driving practice? Fine. She'll pass, no problem. As long as she remembers to use her mirror and watch the speed limit. Oh, thanks for doing that. That's not a problem. I really felt today that I'd finally got on top of things at Lower Luxley. Oh, Good. Reg gets his new assistant next week. Vineyard sorted. Papers for Graham's meeting are OK, so I shouldn't have to spend nearly so much time there now. Oh, that's a relief. We've hardly started on the lambing pens. Yeah. So I told Brian he doesn't need to come over anymore. What? Well, it's been a month now. I know, but... And it's not as if he doesn't have a business of his own to run. I couldn't have managed without him, David. I know, I know. He's been brilliant. And even with him, it's been a struggle. Yeah, but I think we can probably cope now. You reckon? You see, a lot of the pressure at Lower Loxley, it's because Elizabeth's got this meeting with the trustees. Well, when's that? It's on Monday. And she's just so determined to prove that everything's under control, which I think it is now, pretty much. Do you think they will advise getting a manager in? I expect so. Well, they should do really, shouldn't they? Yeah, but I don't think she's all that keen. Well, maybe not, but she can't rely on you indefinitely. Yeah, I know, but it is getting easier now, Ruth. Like I said, I've just got a little bit of a state business to deal with, that's all. Some stuff to do with the rare breeds and a routine meeting with Graham Ryder. We start lambing in less than two weeks. I know, but that's the thing. The pressure's off. I'll be here. We'll be fine. How's she going to manage on her own? Oh, she's pretty organised. And you know, Helen... Once she's made up her mind. When my boys was little, I was crying out for help. <laughs> so it was I. Now, is that the lot for Underwoods? Uh, what about these later pots? Oh, yeah. Pass them over. Yeah. And it's only a week or so, isn't it, since little Henry came back from the hospital? I know. 
Yeah, there's no point in arguing with her. She'll be back, Pat. You know, a few days having to cope on her own and she'll realise. Mm, I wouldn't bet on it. Now let's have the ones for Ambridge Organics. OK. And to be fair, she's doing fantastically well. Oh, she looks a picture. You'd never know she were up half the night with a small baby. The trouble is, she's not supposed to drive yet. Oh, not she? No, not for another couple of weeks. So I've got to chauffeur her back to the flat. And obviously I want to get her settled in, so it's going to take me most of the afternoon. Well, that's OK. I've still got time to make up for Tuesday, so we'll just carry on till everything's done. Oh, what would I do without you, Clary? Oh, although I will need to nip down the shop dinner time, get some in Freddie and Joe's tea. I've put the first lot of sheets on to wash, OK. OK. And I'm just going to go and do the bathroom. But was there anything else you particularly wanted done? I don't think so. Morning, David. Oh, hi, Emma. How are you? Fine, thanks. Although this floor is a bit disgusting, some people don't always take their boots off. Uh, excuse me? Naming no names. So could you give it a quick going over, do you think? Yeah, sure. I'll finish off upstairs first. Thanks, Emma. Ooh, she's quite a size now, isn't she? Yeah. I'm afraid we're not going to have her for much longer. She's obviously finding bending down a bit tricky. We'll have to get someone else in. It's not that easy. Can't you just put a postcard up in the shop? I'd rather get someone we know. I don't really like the idea of a stranger poking around our house. Well, there wouldn't be a stranger for long. we have got to have someone. I suppose. Well, there's no way you can manage the house as well as the farm. No way I can manage. That's no way we can manage. Not the way things are at the moment. But it's not going to carry on like this, is it? No, but... You said you wouldn't be spending nearly so much time at Lower Loxley after this week. Yeah, well, I hope things are going to get easier. You hope? I'm pretty sure. Now I know what needs to be done. Anyway, has Pip gone? Half an hour ago. Oh, I wanted to wish her good luck. I'll see you later, Susan, OK? Morning, Clary. Oh, Emma, hello. Have you heard the news? What news? Oh, look, front page of the Echo. Look, look, look. It was announced yesterday that Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Cornwall, is to visit Ambridge. Really? Let me see. The visit is to mark the 25th anniversary. Oh, she's only going to Great Gables. Yeah, well, she's going there for this charity thing, you see. But you'd think while she was here, she'd have a look round, wouldn't you? I mean, if I was her, I'd want to go to St Stephen's. She's royalty, Clary, not any old tourists. Yeah, I know, but... Well, I always think she looks really nice and approachable. You know, like a regular person. I bet you could have a real proper chat with her. What day is she coming? Um, the 16th, it says. Hmm. Couple of weeks' time. Wonder if we'll get to see her. Well, I shall make sure of it. <laughs> You'll be camping out on the pavement, will you? <laughs> if that's what it takes. Outside Grey Gables. Anyway, I must get back to work. Oh, Clary. Yes? I was just wondering. I've got a bit of shopping to do for the baby. And I thought it would be really nice if... Well, if we go together. You and me. Oh. Yeah, well, well, I'd love to. Um, uh, uh, about your mum. What about her? Well, wouldn't she like to go with you? I'm going shopping with mum any time. I just thought... You know, this baby's your grandchild too. Of course it is. And it's a lovely thought, and thank you for asking. Um, but when did you have in mind? Whenever you're free. What about this afternoon? I'm working, Emma. Tomorrow? Well, no. I'm still trying to catch up with myself. I had so much time off with my broken wrist, you see. Well, what about next week? Well, it would have to be the weekend. The weekends are a bit tricky. Couldn't you get a day off? Not really, not just now. But you had a day off to go out with Nick. That were a WI out in it, were arranged weeks ago. Still a day off. Oh, come on, this is ridiculous. David, have you seen the file for the assisted living conference? What? It's a blue folder. No, sorry, I've been wrestling with this stupid computer all morning. What's wrong with it? Well, it's not the computer, it's just... 
I'm trying to source the paperwork for this meeting with Graham Ryder, OK? Only he called me this morning, and this meeting is not just the simple quarterly meeting. He needs all the paperwork for the annual report. Uh. So it's more complicated than I thought, and there just doesn't seem to be any kind of coordinated record. Of what? Well, of anything. I found this great box file of what I thought were receipts, but there's all sorts of invoices and other stuff in there. I mean, look, there's a credit card bill. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that relates to the estate or whether it's a personal card. No, it looks like estate stuff. And I've no idea if it's been paid or not. I'll have to check it against the bank statement. Yeah, but where are the bank statements? In the filing cabinet under bank. Well, I can't see them. Right, definitely there. Oh, that's odd. I, I don't think I've had them out for any reason. I, I wonder if Kenton... Um, now, hang on, let me just check. Uh, no, here they are. Huh? They're filed under S for statements. Oh, Sometimes you need to think a bit laterally with Nigel's filing. Oh, right. OK. And uh, what about computer passwords? He didn't usually bother. Well, he bothered with this one. What is it? Well, I'm hoping it's the maintenance records for the estate buildings. Uh, mother's name, Carmichael? I tried that. I tried your name, I tried the kids' names, birthdays. Try Tiddles. Tiddles? His favourite teddy. Hmm. Oh! Brilliant! Oh, should have asked you first. Could have saved myself hours. Oh, hang on. What? Now this only goes up to October. And I know there was maintenance work done on the lower cottages. I remember seeing the scaffolding. Yeah, there was a problem with the chimney. Yeah, and that must have been November time. And the barn at Loxley Bottom Farm had to have a new roof. Did it? There must be a record of that. It was a huge job. No, well, it's not here. Unless I'm looking in the wrong place. Let's just go back to the menu and see. Let's try diddles again. I'm sorry. No, it's not your fault. He knew what he was doing, but it was in his own head, you see. Aha, now, this looks more like and it. Sometimes Nigel's filing system was just so... Well, it wasn't a system at all. Oh, I see what he's done. Just a bizarre kind of word association. The two jobs were done by the same contractor, so he's created a separate file. I once found a load of invoices from a tree surgeon called Rossley or something, filed under beard. And Nigel said he could never remember the man's name, but he knew he had a beard. Well, I suppose that's logical. It made it impossible for anyone else to find anything. Now, I shall need to have another word with, um... What's the name? Your bookkeeper. Morag. Morag. Because it looks as though this has been paid, Drove her up the wall it... that things were never in a logical place. She was always threatening to hand in a notice. Oh, but she thought the world of Nigel. I know. She told me. And of course he'd apologise sweetly, buy her flowers and promise to reform. But he never could. Because to him, in his head, it all made perfect sense. It's just the rest of us who couldn't... Anyway, I'm, I'm sure between us, more and I... And I could... said to him, time and time again, I said to him, what would happen if you went under a bus? How could Listen. somebody else possibly deal with this eccentric setup? It's all right. And he just laughed. And he promised he'd take care crossing the road, <sighs> as if I literally meant a bus. Look, Elizabeth, don't worry. I am pretty sure I've got a handle on this now. It'll just take me a bit of time. He never took any notice of me, never. Of course he did. How can you possibly say what that? What was he thinking of, David, going clambering about on that roof? I know, but we... It was just, just I... so typical of him. So irresponsible. <laughs> I warned him. I told him not to go up there, but did he listen? No, he didn't! Elizabeth, please... <gasps> I'm sorry. It's all right. It's OK. It's OK. No, just ignore me. Sometimes I just... I just get so angry with him. Really? It's fine. I try not to give in to it. It doesn't do any good. But sometimes... Any, anyway... Look, there are some... There are some files in here that relate to the estate farm. Here we are. Loxley Bottom Farm. Oh, it just looks like more receipts. See. No, 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 no. This is good. Look, look, here's the builder's invoice for the barn roof. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. You leave this with me. I'm sure I can sort it out. Oh, Clary, you're still here. Nearly done. Just got to get these utensils washed and put away. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. Like I said, I had a lot of time to make up. Anyways, Helen, all right. Oh, Clary, I hated leaving her there all on her own. Oh. 
No, I have to say the flat is very cosy. And the fact is, if she needs anything, she only has to pop downstairs to the shop. Oh, have you seen the Echo? What? About the Duchess of Cornwall? Isn't it exciting? Quite a coup for Grey Gables, isn't it? Uh, their second royal visit. Do you remember when Princess Margaret came? Yeah, I was there. Were you? Did you get to meet her? Oh, no. No, there was a fashion show and we were in the audience. I caught a glimpse of her across a very crowded room. <laughs> anyway, can I leave you to finish off? Oh, yeah, of course. Only I've got Cathy coming round for supper. Oh, by the way, I, I bumped into Emma in the shop. Oh, I saw her dinner time. She wanted me to go shopping with her. Shopping? For baby clothes. Oh, well, nice that she asks. Ah, you know what it's about, don't you? What? All them weeks I'll be laid up with me arm in plaster and in need of a helping hand, I hardly saw I would no hair of her. Didn't you? Nah, where a nick, she were round our place every other day. Little treasure she were. You said. So now, Emma's noticed that me and Nick are good friends and she's jealous. Silly girl. Go on, get a move on. That's good girl. Where the hell have you been? Sorry, sorry, I did try to ring, but you were engaged. Haven't you gotten in a few meetings? Yes, I'm supposed to be chairing a panel about retirement planning. So where have you been all this time? It's this meeting next week with Graham Ryder. It's rather more complicated than I thought it was going to be. Nigel's filing system. You said to me is only last night. A complete You said nightmare. things are going to be easier from now on. Yes, I know what I said. You promised. Well, I was wrong. Sorry. Now I must go and get changed. What about your dinner? I'll have something when I get back. Oh, by the way, David. What? You might be interested to know that your daughter passed her driving test. He was on the phone for about half an hour. He's in such a state about her. Oh, I thought Tony decided he'd quite like being a grandfather. Well, he adores little Henry. He's terribly <laughs> sweet, but... Oh, that's why he's in a state. <laughs> Do you want more coffee? No, no, you finished off. <sighs> he thinks Helen should stay at Bridge Farm for a couple of months at least, <sighs> and preferably till Henry starts school. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I said I'd pop in to see her this afternoon. Well, that's very decent of you. Mm. And taking some of that venison casserole that I made for the last shoot. There's tons of it in the freezer. Oh, by the way, darling, and don't forget, I'm joining Matt for a round of golf later on. Oh, so you're not going over to Brookfield? No, no, no. David's quite adamant. No, my services are no longer required. That's a shame, really. <sighs> Starting to rather enjoy it. It's a while since you played golf. Yeah, and it's probably a complete waste of my time. I mean, if this client of Matt's is so interested in the shoot, why does he leave it right till the end of the season to say so? Yeah, that's a point. So I suspect it's more to do with Matt showing off his client, <laughs> you know, letting me know how well Amside is doing. But is it? I've no idea. From what Adam said, Lillian's a bit gloomy uh, about yeah, it. But if this chap is interested in the shoot, it'll be worth making his acquaintance. And if not, well, it's a good opportunity to brush up on my putting. I'm not letting you take the car if you're going to drive like that. I didn't know there was a speed limit on the farm track. Well, maybe we should introduce one. <laughs> anyway, the ewes are all fed. Is there anything else you want me to do? What time are you supposed to be in college? Half ten. Hey, you'd better get going, then. Are you sure you don't mind me taking the car? As long as you pick up the shopping on your way home. I'd have to list some money on the kitchen table. Thanks, Mum. And watch your speed. Yeah, all right. We don't want you getting booked on your first day as a qualified driver. <laughs> Has Dad gone already? Ages ago. Is he going to be around at the weekend? I've no idea. It's just... Uh, well, we've hardly started on the lambing pens. I know, I know. The trouble is... Well, a couple of days ago, your dad was saying he had everything under control at Lower Luxley and he wouldn't need to spend nearly so much time over there. Well, that's good, isn't it? But now he seems to have changed his mind. Oh. So when we'll see him again, I really couldn't say. Right. Well, I could make a start this evening. And what? The lambing pens. Are you not going out? Not tonight, no. And maybe I could bribe Josh to give me a hand. Now, if I put you down here just for five minutes... 
please, Henry. Mummy's not going to leave you, darling. I just need to have a shower. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Up you come. No, <laughs> oh, she's not supposed to be here for another half hour. Here's me still in my pajamas. Oh, Ian, thank goodness. What? What's the matter? Oh. I thought you were the health visitor. It's my first appointment with her, and I phoned to say I wasn't going to be at Bridge Farm. That I was moving back here, and she said, "Are you sure you're ready? Are you sure you can cope on your own?" And I said, "I'll be fine. Of course I can cope." And just look at the state of me. You look perfectly fine. Oh, I haven't even brushed my teeth this morning. I've been trying to get into the bathroom for the past hour. I have to put Henry down. He's not so well. It's so unlike oh, him. Oh dear! Here, here. Come on. Here, let me have him. That's it. He's been fed. It doesn't need changing. All oh, right, so what's your problem, Henry? Hey, hey? Is there something I can help with, maybe? Okay. So why don't you tell me all about it, where your mum goes and she gets herself dressed? What do you say, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very good to hear. I couldn't agree more. Uh, all right. Yeah, yeah, go on. Off you go. Off you go. Now, Henry, huh? I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll sit ourselves down in the other room and we'll have a good old man-to-man chat. How's about that, eh? Four! Oh, I don't think she heard. Oh, look at her, strolling down the middle of the fairway like it's Borchester High Street. <laughs> Lillian! Help the white... Oh, thank goodness for that. Now, a tenor says I'll get this on the green. No, I'm not betting against you, Matt. Not today. <laughs> Can't see up, blame you. Right. Oh, good shot. Yeah, yeah, that's going pretty straight. But will it make the gri... Oh, no, look at that. Oh, come on, come on. You're only just off. Oh, you can't complain at that. You could have won yourself a tenner. Well, there you go. Not my lucky day. Still, it's been worth your while, hasn't it? If your mate Doherty is as good as his word. Oh, yeah. Well, it could be just what we need for the shoot. No, he's a straight arrow, old Dockers. Well, Lillian seems to get on well with him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She knows when to turn on the charm, does uh, Lillian. Done business with him before, have you? Not as such, but this deal with Amside, it's pretty well sewn up. Right. Yeah, we're doing remarkably well. I mean, you'd expect the property market to be dead as a dodo this time of year, wouldn't you? But the fact is... Yeah, yeah, we're... Matt, hang on. Just, just, just let me play this. All right, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'll just shut up. Oh, hell's teeth. <laughs> Lost your magic touch today, Brian. Well, I'm a bit stiff, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah? I've been doing some serious manual labour these past few weeks. Well, it'll take a bit of digging to get your ball out of that. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Uh, so, how are things over Lower Loxley? Well, the family are all rallying round. David's over there most days. They seem to be keeping the business taking over okay. Yeah, but in the long term. What? Well, Elizabeth won't want to carry on, will she? Well, why not? Well, I'm not saying she couldn't. I mean, she was always the brains of the outfit, wasn't she? She's the practical one, certainly. But if I was in her shoes, I certainly wouldn't want to carry on, would you? I don't know. Now, I'd move out, get a management company and save myself the hassle. Would you? Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad setup they've got there. They could make more of the estate, though. You reckon? Yeah, well, for instance, there's a couple of acres right on the Lake of Green Road just crying out for development. <laughs> You'll be lucky. No, 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 I'm only saying. Matt, one thing you may be absolutely sure of, Elizabeth's not going to start selling off bits of Pargeta land. The potential is there, that's all I'm saying. Not that I'd be interested. Oh, no, of course no, not. No, 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 to be honest, I really couldn't handle any more business at the moment. And when we get the go-ahead on the market... If we get the go-ahead... Oh, there's no if about it, Brian, it's all sewn up. Yeah, so you say. Because I know. Right. What, you don't believe me? Well, I know there's a very good chance the plans will be accepted. It's a done deal. Says who? Oh, come on, Brian, you don't expect me to reveal my sources, do you? Let's just say it's someone very... Close to the chair of the planning department. Okay, Brian. I think I'm gonna walk on. You're on your own there, mate. Right. You've heard about it? Yeah, I was in the Echo yesterday. Oh, of course, yeah. So I got it all from Clary, who was working in the dairy, and then when Mum brought me back here, Jim Lloyd was behind the counter in the shop, and Jim Lloyd. No, I would have. 
put money on him being a staunch Republican. Well, maybe he is, but he seems to thoroughly approve of the Duchess of Cornwall. You should hear Linda on the subject. Why? What she said? Well, no, I mean, she's made up her mind, right, that a senior receptionist, she should be man on the front desk when Her Royal Highness arrives. Oh. But unfortunately, she's not scheduled to work that day, so she decided, right, without consulting anyone else, that she was going to change the schedule. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, it turns out the rest of the reception staff oh. are even more ardently royalist than Linda, I'll tell you. I mean, we very nearly had a walkout. Oh, no! <laughs> Caroline had to arbitrate in the end. Oh, oh, are you expecting someone else? No. No, no, I, I, no don't you move. I'll go and get it. Oh, hello, Anne. <laughs> hello, Jennifer. Oh, hi, Auntie Jennifer. Come on in. Oh, I didn't realise you had come. Oh no, 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 I'll have to shut off fairly soon. Anyway, I'm working this evening. Come through. Oh, look at him. Well, I put the kettle on. Make us a cup of tea. Oh, that'd be lovely. Oh, put these in the kitchen, will you? Oh, what have we got here? Oh, that's. Uh, it's just a venison casserole. Oh, thank you. Well, your father phoned me last night and convinced me that you were going to starve to death here on your own. Oh, Dad, he makes such a fuss, <laughs> but thank you. Anything I can just heat up and eat is brilliant. <laughs> and uh, what's in the tin? Oh, um, those are some cupcakes. Cupcakes? Mm-hmm. Phoebe and Kate made those last night. OK, well, we'll have some with her tea. Oh, I must say you've got this flat looking really lovely. Oh, you should have seen it this morning. I mean, it's really cosy, isn't it? Perfect for you and, and the baby. Mm. I had my first visit from the health visitor today. Already? Mm. I don't know what it was, because Henry is normally such a good baby. Mm-hmm. Perhaps it's the change of environment, you know, coming back here. But this morning, he would not let me out of his sight. After I put him down, his little face puckered up and he started to wail. Oh, dear. The place was a complete tip, and I hadn't managed to have a shower or anything. Oh, yes, I can remember how that was. <laughs> oh, this is such a panic, thinking the health visitors are going to take one look at me and brand me as an unfit mother. <laughs> oh, she wouldn't do that. Yeah, well, then Ian turned up, bless him. <laughs> Got us all organised. And what did the health visitor have to say? Oh, she was very pleased with us. Mm-hmm. We have our little red book. It's um, just there on the table beside you. Oh, This is your official record, is it? Yes. (laughs) All Henry's vital statistics. And she was dead impressed with how much weight he'd put on. So he's quite a little star, aren't you, Henry? (laughs) I should think you've done enough for one night, haven't you? I haven't made much of an impression. I think you've done brilliantly. Well, I'd have done twice as much if Josh hadn't bailed out after half an hour. Well, it's not the most thrilling way to spend a Friday night, putting up lambing pens. Oh, now I've lost my bit of twine. Oh, here, you've dropped it. Thanks. Is Dad home? Yeah, he's just back. Did I imagine it, or did he say he'd get all the stuff we need for lambing? Why? Well, have a look in the veterinary cupboard. Hasn't been touched since last year, by the look of it. Hardly any aerosols, no navel dressings, as far as I can see. Virtually no glucose. And I tried the heating lamps. Those two at the end don't seem to be working. It's just one thing after another at the moment. Dad did say he'd see to it, though, didn't he? He obviously needs reminding. So I expect he'll sort it out next week. He's saying now he's got to spend the whole week at Lower Loxley. Oh, OK. It's not OK, though, is it? If he says he's going to do something, he should do it. Otherwise, it's just not going to happen. Look, I'll make a list of everything we need, OK? I haven't got time to chase around after him. Check no. And then all he'll have to do is pop into the supplier. And what about these pens? We can do it. Between us, we can manage. The thing that really gets to me is your Uncle Brian was ready and willing to pitch in and help. And what does your dad do? Tells him, thanks very much, we don't need you anymore. Pip... I just can't believe he said that. 